Easter. Uh, we celebrate yet again uh, by live streaming. Certainly missed the congregation. I heard the bells, but there were no people coming through the doors. That's, that's a, a weird sort of feeling. But welcome to the parishioners from Holy Redeemer, Our Lady of Perpetual Help, St. Michael's, Our Lady of the Lake University, and to all of my family and friends in Perryville, Missouri, and throughout the country who are watching. We're happy that you are here to celebrate with us today. Um, please use the worship aid that was uh, posted on all three Facebook pages uh, to follow along and to take part in the singing. Uh, we encourage you to uh, lift up your hearts in song and your minds and your hearts in prayer as we gather today to celebrate this third Sunday of Easter. For truly, it is again Easter Sunday as we continue in this Easter season, the joy of the resurrection. So let us celebrate with one another, let's pray with one another, let us unite our minds and hearts with one another as we celebrate the Eucharist. Welcome. Bienvenido a todos. Welcome, everyone.
May you be doing so forever, O oh God, in renewed usefulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward with confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Show. 
Hermanos, puesto que ustedes llaman Padre a Dios, que juzga imparcialmente la conducta de cada uno según sus obras, vivan siempre con temor filial durante su peregrinar por la tierra. Bien saben ustedes que de su estéril manera de vivir, heredada de sus padres, los ha rescatado Dios. No con bienes efímeros como el oro y la plata, sino con la sangre preciosa de Cristo, el Cordero sin defecto ni mancha, a cual Dios había elegido desde antes de la creación del mundo, y por amor a ustedes lo ha manifestado en estos tiempos que son los últimos. Por Cristo ustedes creen en Dios quien lo resucitó de entre los muertos y lo llenó de gloria a fin de que la fe de ustedes sea también esperanza en Dios. Palabra de Dios. Beloved, if you invoke as Father Him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourself with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your feudal conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The Word of the Lord. Just as the women had described him, 
they did not see. He said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were open, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the Jew recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the nice things about live streaming is that you can get messages uh, while you're preaching or before you're preaching. And we got a message that said, speak up louder. So I guess I need to speak up louder. So uh, I don't really think I'm loud enough, but I guess not. You know, I don't have anybody's face to get into like I normally do whenever I preach. So it's a little, I miss that. I'm anxious for all of you to get back so that I can challenge you and get in your faces like I normally do when I preach. This gospel passage today, that Jesus on the road to Emmaus, is probably one of my favorite scripture passages. Uh, because I love the, the whole imagery of Jesus walking along with these disciples on a journey. It's like he's on a journey. They are very downcast. They're upset. They're frustrated because of what has taken place. Jesus was supposed to be this ruler that would come and free them. And yet he died on the cross. So they were upset, they were downcast, they were sad. In some ways, we're kind of downcast, we're kind of sad, we're kind of feeling a bit rejected right now in our lives because of what's going on in the world. But Jesus walks with the disciples, and as he walks with the disciples, he kind of questions them. I love it because he's kind of almost playful with them. What things? What, what happened? And so they tell what had happened. And then he says, oh, you're, don't be foolish. Don't you believe what was said? And so then he breaks open for them all that was referring to him in the scriptures. And then he acts like he's going on farther. Again, almost kind of testing them to see what they're going to do. He's a stranger to them. They still don't, do not know who he is. And as he acts as though he's going farther, they invite him in. They invite him in to their home. And while there, at dinner, he breaks the bread and they recognize him. They recognize him. And after they recognize him, he vanishes. And then they say, were not our hearts burning as he opened for us on the road all those things about himself? Were not our hearts burning? Brothers and sisters, one of the great things I think about the story of the road to Emmaus is it speaks eloquently about what takes place at the liturgy. Jesus comes to us in the Word. And Jesus comes to us in the Eucharist. Exactly what is taking place on the road to Emmaus. 
Jesus reveals himself in word and in the Eucharist. And they're filled with joy. And they have to run back to the disciples and tell the other disciples of their experience. Jesus continues to walk with us. You know, they still didn't get it, and you know, sometimes we still don't get it, do we? But Jesus continues to walk with us. Jesus continues to reveal himself through the beautiful scriptures that we heard today and the scriptures that we uh, receive every Sunday, every day of the week. He reveals himself to us over and over and over that he is with us, that he walks with us, that he is there for mercy and love and forgiveness and peace. He is there with us even in those times when we don't get it, when we feel down, when we feel lonely, when we feel as though there is no future. He is with us and wants to reveal that to us in the word that is revealed to us and is shared with us in this liturgy. And he reveals himself to us in the Eucharist. Even though you are not here in this church physically, you are with us as we break the bread. Because for two or more gathered, Jesus is there, and as I say over and over again, you are members of the body of Christ. You are one in Christ. You are here. And I know you long to receive. And that will come. The road to Emmaus, I think, should be a gospel passage of comfort for us this day. Knowing that Christ is with us. Christ is walks with us in the daily ins and outs of living. And he will continue to walk with us and to reveal his goodness and his love and his mercy. This story is a story of hope. It is a story of joy. That is precisely what we need right now. Hope and joy for the life that Jesus gives to us. Let us rejoice this third Sunday of Easter as we walk with Jesus on the road to Emmaus, on the road to life, on the road to love, on the road that leads to eternal happiness. Let us stand and make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all angels. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Be God not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us then, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess for baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, in the life of the world to come. Amen. Like David, we abide in confidence in the Lord, for we trust that God will never abandon us. Therefore, we address God with our needs and the needs of all. Por la iglesia, para que, al igual que los, que los primeros discípulos, 
tenemos una, un testimonio sin, sin ser de poder de Cristo sobre el pecado y la muerte y su promesa de salvación para toda la humanidad. Roguemos al Señor. For those who hold public office, that they may empathize with those whom they serve, especially those who are at least well off and most vulnerable. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For los agricultores que sembran las semillas y cuidan de la germinación que el portar darán los frutos que nos alimentan y dedican, rogamos al Señor. Y rogamos al Señor. For all the deceased of our parish families and our own families, especially those who have been victims of the coronavirus, may they feel the human touch of the risen Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Rogamos al Señor. Por todos los que estamos aquí reunidos hoy para que nos esforcemos por reconocer a Jesús en, en quienes nos encontramos en, en nuestro camino, rogamos al Señor. Rogamos al Señor. For all prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. I know we pray for the deceased, but we remember Deb Davenport, the Holy Redeemer, who passed away this week. For all our deceased loved ones, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy and love, help us to spread your mercy and love to all those we meet. Hear the prayers we make to you today and grant them, we pray, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. <laughs> Sacrifice. 
Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful, for his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the light of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> In a similar way, the supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink for it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of Yeah, that's not the recommendation. 
siguiendo tu divina enseñanza, nos atrevemos a decir, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Líbranos de todos los males, Señor, y concédenos la paz en nuestros días, para que ayudamos por tu misericordia, vivamos siempre libres de pecar por Dios de toda perturbación. Mientras esperamos la gloriosa venida de nuestro Salvador Jesucristo. For the kingdom, the power, the glory, and the glory of Jesus. Señor Jesucristo, que dice a tus apóstoles la paz, les dejo mi paz, les doy. No tengas en cuenta nuestros pecados, sino la fe de tu iglesia conforme a tu palabra, concédeme la paz y la unidad de que vivimos por los siglos de los siglos. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a gesture of peace.
Before our communion meditation song, I invite those of you in your homes who are using the worship aids to join us in praying the spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you with all my heart. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already in my heart, and unite myself to you completely. Do not let me ever be separated from you.
there's others celebrating their birthday also. Um, so, this coming week, if you want to send me your name, your birth date, and your age, you've got to give me your age. I think it's turning 70. You've got to send your age. I'll say those next week before we sing happy birthday. Either my email address, or you can message me, or you can send it in the mail. I don't care how you get it to me, I'll be happy to give your name before we sing happy birthday next week. Happy birthday. Well, stand up. If you are standing up, stand up. Get into it, brothers and sisters. Happy birthday to y'all. Happy birthday to y'all. Happy birthday to all y'all. Happy birthday to y'all. And many more. All right, all right. Happy birthday to all of you. And I do want to acknowledge Michelle Griffin did not get me a birthday piece of birthday cake, but her brother Leo did. So, Leo, you got that piece of cake Ms. for me? is both of them. Oh, it's for both of them. Okay, so I take that back, Michelle. This is a piece of birthday cake for both of you. Let's see. Let's see if it's... Let's see, let's see. Ah, oh, this is a nice... It looks like carrot cake. There you go. Okay, oh, for my breakfast today. Anyways, happy birthday to all of you. Happy anniversary to all of you. A couple of things going on this week. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, watch our Facebook page at 9 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to do a brief spiritual reflection Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Remember, you can watch the live stream at 1230 from Our Lady of the Lake University on Tuesdays and Thursdays. That is on, uh, on our, our Facebook pages. Anthony has been helpful, helping to get all this stuff out, plus post some things that the Pope says and to keep us all socially engaged. And Leo has, again, been recording, and he gets it on YouTube, and that's good for those people in the parish who are not on Facebook. So I'm grateful, grateful, grateful for all the work. Grateful for the lectors who are here today. I made Leo do double duty, camera and lector. And I thank the musicians who have been faithful about coming. I really appreciate that. I think that brings some life to the liturgy also. Uh, also this week, watch for our inaugural issue of our parish bulletin for the three parishes. It'll have a brief reflection from me, plus some updated things are going on in the parish. Life continues here in the parish, even though you might think that everything's shut down. Life does continue. We still have the Easter reflection booklets that go through Pentecost. If anyone would like one, please just contact the offices and we can get that to you. For those of you who purchase candles at Our Lady Perpetual Hope, they're still in the church. If you want to come pick them up, let us know. We can make sure that we get them available for you to pick them up. Parents, in regard to uh, the Sacrament of First Reconciliation, First Communion, and Confirmation, all those will be rescheduled. So it will take place, but it will take place when we can all celebrate together. It makes no sense doing it two at a time with only a couple people present. It really should be a celebration that is part of the community. So uh, you'll have to just watch for those times. Nothing has been set at this point. RCIA, uh, I know that you're continuing to meet via Zoom. I'm grateful for your faithfulness and your fidelity. Uh, we'll look at how we can start bringing you in uh, to the church so that uh, you don't feel like you're sort of left out there. If you're not, praying for you. I live you in spirit, and I know that the RCIA team with, with Fabian, uh, Friar Fabian, and Carol, and, and Deacon Rusty, and Brenda are doing a wonderful job. I'm grateful for that. Deacon Rusty from our lady from Metro Hope said to tell everyone hello, and that he loves you all. So, uh, he spoke to me yesterday about going on in the parish of perpetual help. St. Michael's, things continue to move along there also. A project that had been started before uh, this 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 uh, whole uh, pandemic started in a couple of weeks. We have to put some jacks in front of the church to uh, take care of some sinking that has gone on over the past number of years. So again, you are in my prayers. You are in my thoughts. I will be leaving after this mass to go visit uh, one of the homebound from our parish, Holy Redeemer, who is suffering from cancer. I will be uh, uh, presiding over Deb Davenport's funeral this week. Uh, again, because of social limits, uh, please check with the funeral home uh, before you go or uh, 
so that you know what you can and what you cannot do. Also, there was a parishioner from St. Michael's who passed away, and uh, I want to acknowledge that also. Besides Deb Davenport, um, Enrique Hernandez uh, passed away from St. Michael's, so I want to acknowledge that and let his family know that we are praying for them also. Let us continue to remember any of our parishioners who are suffering at this time, who feel alone, who feel as though they're forgotten, who feel as though they are disconnected. Certainly, you are with us in heart and in prayer. Reach out to parishioners that you know and maybe do not have any family. Uh, again, I cannot say enough thank you for those of you who are sending in your tithes and contributions. It is a tremendous help. You do not know what that means. I know that some of you, because of not having a job uh, or because of right now being laid off, it's very difficult for you. I understand that. And certainly, as we come to this coming Friday, as we celebrate the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker, you just know that you will be in my prayers so that uh, you will have a job and income. Uh, and we pray for the intercession of St. Joseph the Worker and help us in that. Let us continue to pray for one another, support one another, and love one another as we move forward through this week. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be with you on this third Sunday of Easter. Amen. Amen. Amen.